Welcome to Psychic Nerds 57, surrounded by all my friends. Phil, man, what do you got there behind you? Is that a 57 Chevy? What is that? Yep, 57 Chevy Bel Air. Damn, dude. Um, you getting closer to uh, realizing one of those in real life or no? Uh, slow but sure. Yeah. Tarzan, how are you doing, sir? So you got the Silver Surfer behind you, the Herald of the Marvel Universe. Yes. Uh, I'm a U of N fan. Bliss, Samantha Jane James. Han, fresh out of a shower. Dee Dee with the jokes. Yeah. <laughs> Matt Curdy with the uh, amazing hair. Uh, Mary M, Lost Shaker, Crypto Spartan, and the ghost Santino down there. Um, Hi, Lou. Hey, bud. Hi, how you doing? You having a good week? I'm doing great. Yeah, I'm doing really good. Good. Um, Thank you boy. for asking. Very kind. It's you're always very kind that way to ask. Well, I I care how you're doing. I truly sure. care how you're doing. I know. Um, <laughs> I like how you say it softly. It makes it even more weird. Okay, so uh, what a what a great week in cryptos, right? Uh, lots of things popping off all over the place. Um, I like this this meme. So ETH ETH trader reddit has the best memes so whenever i'm uh meme deficient i just go there and grab some memes so um it's they have literally the best memes so those are green candles destroying that house uh behind me hope they have insurance um i want to hit a bunch of fa things today um there's lots of fa things kicking off and i think uh people will uh probably have some insights around those uh, Curdy and Moss are going to recount uh, and get into a discussion about predictions. Uh, we came across this creepy thing called the orb. I want to talk about that, uh, capturing people's retina and iris scans and giving them crypto to do so. It was kind of interesting. Um, yeah, and then Spartan will do some uh, charting and uh, we'll have the usual banter. <clears throat> um, if you don't get the whole show, I wish you would. Uh, and if you only get the free sampler, I hope you enjoy it. So uh, let's start here. Uh, first thing I want to look at is Walmart. Walmart has quietly begun hosting Bitcoin ATMs. Retail giant is offering Bitcoin through 200 of its Coinstar kiosks and a tie up with crypto ATM firm CoinMe. Um, I saw some similar articles like this um, about 18 months ago. But this is, I think it may be unique uh, because it's specifically targeting Walmart. Um, what are you guys' thoughts around this? Pretty cool, huh? Once again, yeah. proof that it's just moving forward. It's not going backwards. And I like how um, Bradley over on the Discord said this week that he said his bar was it Bradley who said his bartender indicator had gone off he has a brother <laughs> yeah. a bartender yeah. at a high scale bar and um his he asked kept asking his brother every six months or so um you know if people are talking about bitcoin yet cryptocurrencies and he mm -hmm. said that now they're talking about it and everyone's talking about bitcoin to a hundred thousand so like they're smelling like the forty thousand dollar gain, right? And yeah, um. So his brother finally called him and said, "What should I be buying? How can I yeah. get it?" It's amazing. I remember in the last cycle, I was in a restaurant, <clears throat> and it was the peak, um, and I was having some lunch. I think I just got done with a, a workout and having some lunch, and uh, two young kids were just beside themselves, like basically screaming in the middle of this, you know, little restaurant. Um, how happy they were about Bitcoin and just going crazy. And I remember thinking to myself, oh no, I think this is probably the top <laughs> in this cycle because <laughs> they were so excited. You know, um, what, you know what's yeah. weird though, is that um, I was just reading this this morning. The mm -hmm. analytics uh, show that retail is still 40% below where it was at the May peak of this year. Yeah. Uh, in investment. So the movement we've been seeing has been largely institutional. Um, and I've noticed even myself, anecdotally, uh, just the work that I do in crypto, retail's not here. They're still missing an action, um, which is extremely bullish. It, it means we have a lot of runway left to go. It means retail doesn't trust this, uh, this market. Um, they're afraid of getting crushed again. 
And that's good news um, because it means that the smart money is getting in positioned and the dumb money's not here yet. Yeah. That's, that's really good news, actually. <clears throat> the Google, uh, the kind of search data supports that as well. The metadata, the search data is showing that it well as well that, uh, you know, people just are not out there hitting the searches on uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, cryptocurrency wallets. Um, kind of interesting. However, I have reached out to a few people like me <clears throat> that have been doing this a minute, and uh, they are reporting the same thing as I've been reporting to you guys, that I've got a lot of old, old contacts circling back now. People that uh, came in just in that last cycle, 2017, and uh, they're starting to circle back pretty hard, wanting to... Uh, it sounds like some of them haven't done their homework or they have have uh, some technical issues around this being there, that being over here, and not not really being practiced in it enough to uh, understand maybe what they've done. And now it seems important because we're now getting these, these big rises. So that's good. <clears throat> At least those people are circling back, I guess. The worst part about it is that people are just riding on the word. It's like they're reading about it on the news. So you, you might get, you know, 10 people approaching you, but out of those 10, there really is, is only maybe one or two who are willing to do the work. I mean, they'll think about it as all kind, but if they can get you to do it, oh yeah, right? But right. I just see, I just pull my medium card and I just tell them how much I make an hour, right? <laughs> and then I'm like, you know what? I don't actually have anything open for right. the next little while, right? right? But if you do want some help, like this is what I make an hour, I'm going to suggest that maybe you look into all this yourself. And, you know, if you need some help, if you want to send me a text message here and there, it's not a problem, but I mean, I'm not opening exchanges for them. I'm not oh, opening no. wallets. I'm not oh, testing no. seed words. I'm not holding any custody. I'm not pressing any buttons, zero, nothing. And I, and I, uh, my hats off to everybody who has helped out elderly family members and has actually taken custody of that money for that elderly family member, because they know that they're going to be hooped if they don't put their money into crypto. So my hat's off to you. You've done a very good thing. And, uh, you know, so I don't want to discourage people from looking after the individuals in our society who are really just not able to do this. It's just that there's so many people who are, and it's just easier if they can just shove it off onto you. And then if that exchange closes with their money on it, you know, they're going to look at you and say, well, you made $3 million on Cardano. You know, the least you can do is give me that 80,000 you lost, you lost on that exchange, right? right. You know that, you know, that's going to come out of your mouth. <laughs> Oh, so yeah. just, you know what, avoid the drama in your life and stick with the people. Cause being a millionaire is not for everybody really. I mean, other people will just take out hundred percent of their cryptos and not even factor in income tax. Other right. people will, you know, trade themselves into oblivion, but mm -hmm. you know, the year before when they made money, they didn't, they didn't claim their trading income. Right. So now they've lost it all the following year because they've traded themselves into oblivion. And again, just this kind of money, it's not for everybody. So there are some people who won't do the work, but you're actually doing yourself a really big favor and you're doing them a favor as well, because what's the point of them cleaning out their account and maybe selling that rental house now and taking the profits and rolling it into cryptos if they're going to turn around and lose it because they're too lazy um, to take the time to um, go through what it is that they need to go through to ensure that they know even the basics, like don't give your seed words to anybody and test your wallet before you send like a whole bunch of money in there. And just our whole list of rules that we have for newbies. I, I can't, I can't speak about that enough because I always think in the back of my head, there's always that first person out there. This is the first psychic nerds that they've seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's there's general just kind of security and tenants things around cryptos, which is you know they're they're really important to understand. Um, absolutely, and their their minds, uh, their holes, their traps. That uh, you know, if you've done this for a while, you could have potentially stepped into yourself, right? So, um, I think for most most people, a lot of uh, normal people don't have the time. Uh, I think keeping things up on an exchange is just perfectly fine for them. Um, it gives them ease of access and hopefully they're using an exchange. I uh, really like that FTX exchange. It seems to be resilient against the ups and downs and it doesn't seem to go down. So people can still get access to their stuff and make a buy or a sell. Um, 
I just put in chat a fear greed indicator if yeah. you want to pull that up. Sure. On Bitcoin, it just kind of gives it gives an indication of where we are. Oh yeah, seventy five percent greed. Yeah. yeah, go go down a little bit further, and there's a chart. Mm -hmm. Keep you know, keep sliding down it. Keep going sure. down down. Go on max. Click on click on max. On right there on that chart. Okay, you're behind. Go back me. up a little bit. Yep. Okay. Let's click on max. Click on click on max on that chart. I did. Okay. It's just taking. Now you can. See. So it's just a good indication of it shows you you know where we are in the in terms of fear and greed, and we got a we got a ways to go before we hit the top. Mm -hmm. So it, this tells me Bitcoin can run a lot more, right? And even when it hits the top, it can bounce along that for a while before before we we see a top in this market. Well, it's weird. If I if I go back to this kind of May twenty first time frame, that was our dip, right? Or do I have that wrong? Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, yep. That's what that was your buy indicator right there. Wow. Right after it dropped. Oh, this was right after. Okay. All right. That graph, that graph you're on now is going to start to look schizophrenic over the next few months. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's true. It's true. You just can't compare what's coming. People are like talking about history right. and I'm like, but you've never seen the largest transfer of wealth in the history of mankind though. That's why nothing's going to behave the same as what mm -hmm. people, nothing's going to happen the way people think it's going to happen. Like people are like, no, gold can't go up at the same time the American dollar goes up and- it, you know, and and if the stock market's correct due to their illiquidity, because people are starting to realize that the books, that lots of them are cooking the books, and but then that money starts like flowing into crypto. So I'm really I can see how it would happen now because before when the markets corrected, um, we always got hit with cryptos because a lot of people who played the stock market also were involved in cryptocurrency. So it just made sense, right? But it was like the ultimate buy-in time. You know, if the market had a huge fall like that, you knew it was going to be coming back. I'm scary for those, though, who were up here when it, who just bought in and then it went down like that. Um, but you never know where the bottom is, that's for sure. And you don't want to miss it while it keeps going up, up, up. I was going through some old comments on um, my page and there was one from a year ago and someone was talking about a YouTuber who was talking about YouTube or Bitcoin going to you $1,800. And you look at the timeline and you would see that it's um, the same as uh, probably just before we went from the really big, started to really go up in December because it would have mm -hmm. been like October of last year. And this person was predicting, and I forgot about that. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. People were asking me about, do you think Bitcoin's going to go down to 1800 so and so over on youtube is predicting it and i was like yeah no i don't watch that person and i'm i'm just seeing up 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 i mean i can't i'm not going to change the story it's up 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 but i looked back and i thought to myself oh my gosh what if you had cashed in your bitcoin when it hit 20000 and you were waiting for it to go to 1800 and you just watched it go up 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 right from, you know like to 6 40 50 60 67000 I mean, What's that's just so sick. <clears throat> What's amazing to me is that drop-off we had in, in May, there were so many talking heads out there saying it was going to go to 19, it was going to go to 15, it was going to go to nine, it was going to go to seven. Um, and, you know, anybody listening to these people, man, I, I hope they stop listening, but this is a reoccurring thing for you and I, right? We're, we're always amazed that people will go back for more, <laughs> they'll go back for more, more bad information, right? Yeah. Historic, historical references are going to fail, um, and we're seeing that break down. So I agree with what Sam is saying. Um, and one of the reasons I know that is because I, I'm getting some very strange cycle intersects in my work. In other words, cycles smashing into each other over the coming months that normally don't cross, uh, and they are crossing. So that's why you're going to see like what Sam is seeing intuitively, like uh, metals and the U.S. dollar going up at the same time. That's true. I'm seeing those cycles both happening, intersecting each other, paralleling each other. It doesn't happen normally, but it will happen. Uh, so, and you're going to see vicious swings in many of the markets, not just crypto. Uh, so I was only half kidding saying schizophrenic. So one day you could have 
a greed and fear indicator that moves 70 points, you know, in a 24 hour period. So uh, this is why historical references are going to fail, and why a lot of people are going to be wiped out in the greatest bull market that the world has ever seen. You can have a lot of people wiped out. If people don't know, up on the psychic nerves, we have two sections where um, for the advanced and then the, the, the basic members there where you can ask a question, where you can pose a question. So let's get into it because it's kind of the topic we're covering. Tom19 wanted to know, why is it going to be different this time? Or do we believe it will be different this time? Um, and the question is, uh, would it be possible to have a more of a discussion as to why this time it's going to be different? Um, the crypto market will not necessarily undergo its usual 80 or 90% pullback. Um, so let me throw that out to the group. Why is it different at this time? If you feel, Institu you feel institutional so. money, okay, right? So Institutions are coming. So in 2017, in 2017, there were no institutional investors. All we had was a white paper with some good ideas. So so when the market moved, it was moving based on all speculation. It was like it was like we everyone was buying the sizzle, but the but the of the sizzle from the steak, but there wasn't even a cow born yet to make the steak. <laughs> right. Right. No steak. Today today we can look around and we see a bunch of little cows that are now growing in the in the steers, and, and we we're actually getting some steaks off of, off of these these animals. So when institutional money comes, we're seeing the build out. That that's what's going to make things different this time around. We didn't have the big players in the game. It was only the the new in, investors, the speculators, the early adopters were here. Now the big money is coming. So my theory is get in front of the big money, sit and wait, and collect collect your winnings. Right. And the only reason we can get in front of them is because they have to wait for regulation. They, they can't buy in until they have clarity and regulation. The small guy can get in front because we don't have to wait for we can take the risk, but we but we can now look around and see what's being adopted. So we don't have to guess anymore with white papers. You can see where the build out is. Right. And that, that's right. that's the difference. Yeah, I think it is different this time. So that's my two cents. <clears throat> no, I'm with you. So let me just kind of piggyback on that. And I'll kind of just pull up a couple articles mm -hmm. because I think now we're just starting to tickle, um, just starting to grasp kind of some of the utility of some of these things, right? When you yeah, have- Yeah, I put a good article in chat too, relating okay. to this. When we have, you know, <laughs> Same AP- Same one. Yep, Associated Press basically, you know, basically launching and running a chain link node to ensure that the, the data from its U.S. newspaper uh, consortium basically and broadcast members can be cryptographically uh, verified and actually real world data can be put on the blockchain. So what, I see this two ways. One, this is utility. Um, this is great that <clears throat> they're taking the approach that they want to be able to serve real world data into the blockchain uh, and using chain link uh, basically technology to do that. And also this is a, this is a way for them to stay relevant. If what is what comes through for me that the associated press, you know, providing data, this is just them pivoting and trying to stay relevant and basically trusted here, right. In this new blockchain economy, which is, which is really cool. And what then, I see, go Lou, ahead. Let me, uh, what I got from that was that, um, I don't know if it's possible, but are these people verified, you know, that put these things up? This would stop, possibly stop these fake press releases that get out there that, you know, <clears throat> give a, you know, false sense of something, you know, and they, we've had a bunch of them, you know, over the time. Well, they just can't take them down. Because what right. they do in order to, after they've been caught, because Chainlink isn't going to, and the blockchain's not going to police that. What it's right. going to police is people trying to take stuff down. Think about all the people who posted um, stuff on Twitter five or six years ago that was um, anti-woke culture, you know, stuff that now has go gone against the wokeness that they're maybe making a living off of or speaking for, exactly. or maybe they're running for office or something. And people happen to keep screenshots. I mean, what mm -hmm. are the odds, right? And how many more things have been posted that people just deleted 
Um, so that's what I like about blockchain and a really big part of, uh, of what I like is the, the trustless part where you don't have to, it's, you don't have to trust somebody, for example, to exchange Bitcoin and also on the blockchain, it's not changeable. Like nobody can go back and sort of delete that article. Oh, I didn't write that, you know? Right. Well, they would be able to track them back though, since it's on the chain. That's what I mean. They can't hide it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I like it. And more to the usage, you know, what does this provide a dev or what does this provide a blockchain company? What does this provide an app or a dApp maker, right? Or, Or you name it. Well, it provides them, I mean, basically now the data is fed into the blockchain, right? So they can do all sorts of things. You could see all sorts of new apps. Like the first implementation of this is they want to track election data in uh, U.S. state election data, um, basically starting next year. So this is this is kind of interesting. I saw another one, uh, sports scores, um, where they where they want to provide. Uh, and stats, sports stats, um, basically, and be responsible for feeding that data back into the blockchain. So this is great. Um, so, Moo, uh, is, so I know what Chainlink is, you know, or I think I do anyway, but is it something similar to what uh, Flare is, is trying to produce with their FTSOs? I have no idea. Having multiple, multiple FTSOs for these are... Uh, What's an FTSO? It's a data provider that gathers, they gather information and then provide it into a, a central hub that takes, you know, like 50 or, you know, so different FTSOs. I can't remember what the acronym actually means, mm-hmm. but they gather data and they feed it into this, into this machine, basically. And then that machine takes that aggregation of all the data and creates a price feed as one of the different things. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like an Oracle, but I, yeah. And I, yeah. And I don't want to say that what you're talking about is an Oracle. I would have to actually look at it, but it simply provides real world data that can be used by machines, right. In software to do something with. So settle a bet, um, make sure this went there. Okay. What does that mean? If this, then this, if that, then this, right. Um, it getting a, um, a universal, the, the reason they call it an oracle is you basically get one uh, diversified truth through consensus, right? You might have lots of people reporting on the stat of a player in a game yeah. right? or, a, or a score, but through, <clears throat> through, but through consensus, basically there's, there's one truth, right? That, that comes he, through. Um, PJ but, just, uh, put it up there it's a time series oracle okay uh but there's multiple flavors of oracles as well so machine-led um, analytics machine-led analytics is another thing you're talking about Moo. Yep, it's a yep. big deal i'm a, i'm in a small project now that's beginning to move based on that's what they're doing they're a smaller oracle smaller cap project that deals with machine-led analytics so similar to what Chainlink is doing on a smaller scale, but understand large companies pay big money for the kind of things that we're talking about that now a small little company can now just access this to get the same kind of information, if not better, based on how you've described it, right? So the yeah. power of this, for those that understand it, the power of this is uh, it's, it's b- beyond a game changing. It really is. Uh, it really is because anything we can think of in the real world, right, can be now uh, essentially through the use of oracles and consensus can be fed back into the blockchains in software and machines and s- software can do all sorts of things with it. I mean, all sorts of amazing, incredible things. The other one that kind of stuck th- out to me was Houston Firefighters Pension Fund makes Bitcoin and Ether. Ether purchases. Uh, the fund has invested $25 million in crypto in what appears to be the first U.S. public pension plan. Um, so I thought this was great, uh, and they're doing this through New York Dig. A lot of us are familiar with that. And this is the Houston Firefighters Relief and Retirement Fund. Um, That's great news. Fantastic. Because yeah. as you know, I was down in Houston. I was looking at places in Texas because, you know, I was kind of doing a preliminary you know, because I was there for um, the Miami Bitcoin conference back in, uh, it was 2020 before they shut everything down. 
And uh, I was really happy to see that because that's been one of my, you know, so a lot of hard things to see when you see a future that's coming with this uproar uh, because of what's going to happen with the economic collapse and different things coming. Um, but one of the things that bothered me the most was all of these hardworking middle-class people who, you know, they didn't make enough to really save other than what their house was worth. If they, if they got a house, cause some people didn't make enough money to buy a house where they lived, mm -hmm. but their pension was everything. Like that was what yeah. they were going to live off of. So that upset me the most. And I did see a glimmer of hope where some pensions would be saved because of, once again, just like if you have a governor of a state or the leader of a country that has foresight, they will, they, good politicians will actually save you from what's coming. You know, that's why like life is going to be much better for people in Florida, for example, than they're going to be for people in Michigan. 100%. Uh, yeah. So you can, you'll start to see like that kind of great divide happen. And then if anything, that'll just make the good folks of Michigan wake up and go, Hey, wait a minute. One of these things is not like the other. And I'm not right. talking about Sesame street here. We want the same, right? We demand the yeah. same. Yeah. yeah, we demand it because we yeah. are Americans and we deserve the same. And it's the same with Canada. Um, it's going to happen in different places um, around the world. Um, and I'm excited to see the leaders that are speaking up for their people and standing up for the rights of the individual and not letting, you know, the supply chain overtake them. And they'll they'll be the they'll be good leaders during these tough times they will. that are coming. It's sad that it has to come, but I think that you know, good is going to come from it where we'll, people will, you know, stop being so individualistic and realizing, you know, that together we're stronger. Absolutely. 100%. And, you know, shout out to the great state of Wyoming and, and the people there, uh, legislators there and uh, being so open and welcoming to things like DAOs, right? That's very forward thinking. Uh, digital autonomous organizations or distributed autonomous organizations and or the great state of Florida, you know, or the Miami. I mean, these things make me want to go there. They make me want to spend money. They make me want to, you know, be a part of that, you know. Um, very, very cool. Uh, I want to pull this one up. So thanks, Curdy. Curdy, so this when so this goes back to the idea of verification of of origins, right? Of <clears throat> provenance yep. yeah provenance a uh, major italian news agency uses blockchain based label to verify the origin of its articles so of course they're using ethereum and this was last summer you can see the top of the yeah. article may 1st 2020 but, but this is great i mean and it's even got uh, ernst and young uh using ernst and young ops chains traceability technology anybody familiar with this i am that's cool um but this is great. This is why I do think it's different than last time. And I'm so excited. Uh, and I expect more and more and more. Um, anybody want to take the counter argument? I mean, I guess I could make one. But anybody want to take the counter argument that we're just going to follow the same cycle and things are just going to fall apart and um, blockchain is going to zero? I, I was just going to say, I have a hard time with that particular argument because I don't see how, you know, the banks could just come in last minute, let it only run until December and January, and then let it crash. Like, it, it does, that doesn't make sense to me when you can alternatively have, you, you know, build an entire new business out of this industry with financial instruments that can be used to bail out you know, decades of fraud and malinvestment. Absolutely. Well, it span, spans more than financial also because you've got the supply chain now which really needs blockchain as well. So I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Well, I'll tell, well I mean, the kind of argument I use is that I always try to give myself a reality check. There's still a lot of people that don't know about cryptos. Um, most people have no clue what they are, even how to use them. And I've always said, to some extent, it feels like we're just trading a bunch of, you know, coins amongst ourselves. <laughs> However, when you look at the news, you look at all this stuff building in the background, you know, I think of it like, you know, the internet in the late 1990s, you know, how that was kind of building up. And so I think you have to have that, you have to, if you pull out and have that larger perspective, you see the undercurrents are different. Uh, but while still on the surface, most people are still unaware of cryptos, but they're, they're hearing, you know, more and more people are aware of it, I guess, than we're in, in 2017. So, 
Yeah. Well, I always say the universe will seek efficiency, right? So this technology will be used because it's more efficient than, than old technologies. But what slows the process down is you have to have these companies create create systems where they can become the middleman because they will not use a technology where you can make a transaction in five seconds that cost a penny and nobody's going to get paid to do that. And right? it disintermediates so, those companies as well. So they're not going to give their right. money to. Exactly. So, so the, the process is slowed because we have to have the systems built out, but the technology will be used. It's just how soon will it be used? And the most amazing thing to me is it's kind of like what we were just talking about, about the institutions are coming in, right? Well, I can tell you that, right. I mean, IT technologies and are adopting blockchain technologies as fast as they can, right? I can tell you that they've been building out entire things for a long time, private blockchains, public blockchains, um, <clears throat> all sorts of things. It's It's almost like, the public is the one that's that's unaware of what's happening, right? As usual, I guess, as usual. Um, yeah, but this is well, probably the if first you're time. An that, if first you're time an in institution, you don't you don't want the public to know what you're doing until you build the system and can sell it back to them. Exactly, and this may right. be the first time in history that that individuals really at the retail level have had the opportunity to front run these institutions, which is. Just mind that. Amen. The, the speculative phases will rhyme with previous speculative phases. It's the fundamental piece, the technology that rolls out, that's, gonna, that's the thing that's going to be different than we've ever seen before. Uh, but I think people, where they need to be careful when we talk about, yes, things will be different. They're not going to happen the same. Agree with that. But, you know... Crypto people take that to mean, oh, okay, we're never going to crash. Like, we're never going to have a serious crash again. Like, it's up off only. the races. I, up, 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 up only, and we're never, you know, right. no, 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 no. Yeah, no. we're going to have an incredible speculative mania where you're going to have panic buying. Um, that's ahead of us. But make no mistake, that will end in a major crash. So, um, you know, for uh, I don't think people should delude themselves into thinking that uh you know we're just never gonna come down again and if we do they'll just be shallow you know and then it's all <clears throat> um you're still gonna have coins that get completely wiped out you're gonna have projects that get completely wiped oh, out yeah, you're sure. gonna have stuff like that you're gonna have carnage um and you're gonna see all manners of things good and bad it's still uh, a market it's still a market